Okay, let's talk uh, Photoshop text and a video frame. Um, for Photoshop practice, um, I wanted you to know that there's other ways of uh, getting images um, other than, of course, your camera and a scanner or something like that. And one of them is to take a frame from a video. And so uh, for this week's Photoshop, uh, I'm going to want you to, to to take a screen grab of a video frame and use that in a design for a title. Um, part of this is to introduce you to how to download fonts and install them on your computer, which is an important skill, as well as how to take a frame from a uh, video. Now, in this case, uh, the video I want you to take a frame from is the Edgar Allan Poe Telltale Heart. So, um, yeah, the first thing I want you to do is, um, I guess, you know, watch the video probably. If you don't know who Edgar Allan Poe is, you can go to Wikipedia. And, of course, he is the uh, poet from the 1800s, America, uh, who wrote many of the uh, scary stories or the horror genre that um, is, is very popular today. Um, mysteries and things like that. Some of his most famous ones, of course, are the cat um, and... Um, what was it? The, the Raven, of course, and um, so on. And, uh, of course, another famous of his was, of course, the Telltale Heart. And so I have a video um, that I want you to watch, and it is located um, it's from the 70s, so it's black and white kind of movie. And it's on my YouTube channel already. Um, you can watch it there. Um, you can do full screen. Um, watch the movie, and what I want you to do is pick a frame from the movie and take a screen grab. Of course, if you're on a Mac, you can use the Command Shift 3 to take a screen grab. On the uh, Windows, you can use the Snipping Tool, um, which is under Accessories. So hopefully you know how to take a screen grab on either both Mac or Windows. Uh, here's their title. It's not very good. It's all kind of blurry, but I do like their font. Um, so that, that's quite nice. Um, Actually, you know, so go through the movie. There's a lot of interesting frames. Um, you're just looking to, to, to be able to get a frame. And I'm going to go all the way to the end. I think I'm going to steal one of these frames where he's uh, where his, he's, he's going crazy. Here we go. I like this one. And, and I'm going to take this frame again as the movie's playing. Let me back it up a little bit here. You do Command-Shift-3. Command-Shift-3. And then... Um, Again, by taking a screen grab, and and if I really what I would love to do is be able to give you this video as a QuickTime and show you how to take a frame from a QuickTime movie because that would be much better. But I, I just I can't have you download such a large file off a of canvas. Um, but that that's a skill where you actually copy the frame from QuickTime and put it into Photoshop. And but I I, I really can't do it. So just taking a screen grab might work. I, I wanted it to be more interesting like this as far as it's black and white. So you're kind of stuck with this black and white um, look. And really, the most important thing this week is learning how to download fonts and install them. And I've included a handout on how to do that, a written handout. So after I watch my video um, and take a screen grab, of course, it's going to put it on my desktop. And where is my messy desktop? Where is my messy desktop? Here it is. So I have my two screen grabs on there. And um, I'm not going to open up Photoshop yet. Don't open up Photoshop yet. I know I have I have Photoshop open. Let's close it because if I install a font, it's not going to work on there, right? So um, I don't think I made any changes to this. I'm going to quit without saving. Okay, so make sure you're, 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 when you install fonts, you don't have the program running because the font will not install. Okay, so let's learn about installing fonts. Um, again, I have included a handout right here, how to add fonts to your computer. Uh, it's pretty easy to do on the Mac and Windows. Just drag the font that you download into the uh, font folder, which would be located in the in the system folder of your Windows computer, and it should install there. So again, you can do it on Windows or Mac. Maybe I'm not sure if I included all the directions. I think I explained how to do Windows in the handout here. So uh, to install a font, what I want you to do is um, you know go to dafont.com. 
and of course there's all these different fonts and since we're uh, doing the telltale heart you wanna do maybe a scary there's some Halloween fonts right here that are pretty good that might go good with the telltale heart certainly watch the movie first so that you get a sense of what the movie's all about the whole purpose of this is that we get you know you get an idea of how to to take a um, a genre like horror or something like that and include um, make a design that sort of follows that and so we have um, like I said uh, Halloween might be good um, of course these spider ones yeah, it's quite interesting it's not about spiders it's of course about a man going crazy you know the movies about how he thought he was so um, so smart that he could murder somebody um, um, so um, without getting caught but a, a, the guilt eventually got to him and he got caught medieval might work um, this kind of has a good kind of old feel to it flesh wound I always like that one um, that one might work um, I don't know where I found the one that I have in the sample um, uh, Celtic might work um, stencil might work good um, anything that's kind of bold too you don't want something thin you want something that's kind of bold and 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 there and the handout will talk about the different font sizes and stuff like that um, I'm not really sure here I'm gonna go to the Halloween one again let me see that it sort of has the most scary ones the bones and the, the cat ooh if I, we we're only doing the cat I actually do have the um, the black cat and maybe we should have I should have given you a choice to either do the black cat or the um, I'm not sure about any of these I'm not sure if I like Halloween either I uh, might have to go to old school, um, old school, um, medieval, and the medieval probably would go well. Any of these, they have the sort of old look to them. Let me find one real quick. I'm running out of time here. Uh, faith collapsing, there you go. And of course, you should understand the copyright free for personal use. I know we haven't really talked about that, but... Um, and so I'm going to save this font or open it. If you're in Mac, you can open it. If you're in Windows, download it. It downloads as a compressed file, so you have to uncompress it, then install it. So I'm going to say Archive Utility to uncompress it. Hopefully, it opens up in a window. And then I can double click if it's a TTF, it's a true type font, or it's an OTF or open type font. Those work fine. If you double click, it'll ask me if I want to install. I say install the font, and it should install it into my system. Um, if it comes up with an error message, you might need to check the validation and say install anyways. There it is. Oh, I guess that's it. Is that what I downloaded? Faith something I thought I downloaded. Why is it C-Punk is not dead regularly? Faith collapsing. Oh, here it is. Okay, there it is. Okay, so then I'm going to open up that image inside of, of uh, Photoshop. So I'm, let me I'll minimize this. Uh, open up one of the images inside of Photoshop. Now I want you to have it so it's at, at high definition screen size. So another skill that you need to learn here is of course how to make sure it's at the right screen size. Um, so you might have to crop a little bit. I have some black on the side. Did my other one have black on it? Yeah, they both have black on the side. But um, again, probably the easiest way to get the sizes exactly the way that you, you know, the image sizes exactly the way you want them inside of um, Photoshop is to use the crop tool here. And I'm going to type in um, 1920. And remember to use the width and height. Okay, don't use ratio. I'm going to use width and height. So I'm going to type in 1920px by 1080px. And uh, I'm only going to do 100 dpi. You don't have to do 300 dpi. And then I'm going to crop it to that size. I know it's going to be kind of different frame size, but it's okay. Um, you can crop it a little bit. We're just making an image for the movie. I would like to have it a little bigger, but I don't like that black on the side. It would be nice if I actually had a little bigger frame. But that's what I want you to do. 1920 by 1080. When you're done, hit the checkbox, and it'll make it to size. Now, if you want to um, manipulate the image a little bit, I said you could use some of the filters. Again, um, if you haven't used any of the filters before in Photoshop, there aren't any filters here. You should try them. There's you got your filter gallery. You got a whole bunch of different uh, effects you can do distorting, and in order to not 
you know, maybe destroy your image, you can always duplicate a layer. And if you do not see layers, you can go under Window Layers and see layers. And once you have your layers window open, I can duplicate a layer very easily. Um, I think you can right click on it and probably say duplicate layer. Yeah, uh, that's one way of duplicating. Um, so you might duplicate the layer and then apply some effects to it. Um, the filter gallery has some effects in it. That's probably one you see you get these uh, crazy effects. Um, I like accent edges is always good. Uh, there's distortion um, with the sketchy things right there like that. Um, there you go, some sketchy things. But that doesn't look very good, does it? Okay, and try not to add color to it. I want you to keep black and white. Um, Maybe the, I do like the accent edges or ink outline splatter. I don't know. Try some effects if you want. And after you're done doing an effect, like I just applied, um, I can't remember what, let me move this around a little bit here. So I just applied an effect. And if you don't want that effect to take over, because right now it's just kind of taking over, that's why it kind of it takes over the whole design there. You can minimize the, the effect by um, remember it's on a layer on top because I duplicated layer by either uh, changing the opacity so that brings down the top one so it's not so dramatic maybe you can see it you know less of effect or more effect or then I think we've also looked at the blending modes already in class you can try one of the blending modes Ooh, that one worked pretty well screen lighten there we go so you can use try that that might be quite nice Okay, let's get to using the font. Um, to use the font for the title, I got my um, T right here for type. Um, if I'm going to click on my screen, or before I even click, I can choose my font. Right here is the pull-down menu, and I can't remember the one I was looking at. Um, we were just talking about drip marks. No, it wasn't drip marks. Put a lot of scary ones on there. Which one did we download? Yeah, it's good to remember which one you downloaded. That might help. Faith collapsing, that's the one. So I find my font. Um, you can choose the size. Remember, 72 is one inch, which is pretty big. I'm going to start with the 60. And of course, I'm not going to use any color. I want this to be black and white. So I'm going to just choose white as my font color. And if you've never used fonts before in Photoshop, um, you know, it's a T for text. It's a type tool right here, the type tool. Once you choose the type tool, you can choose the type of font that you want here and then the size is here and then this is kind of the edge of the font right here and then you got left align center right align and then color so you have a whole bunch of options I'm gonna do it as um, different different text so I'm gonna say the tell tell heart so I'm gonna click once and I'm gonna type in the and then I'm going to well, I might even make that a little bit bigger you can use your move tool once you type in the text you can use your move tool and once you use your move tool, remember if you say show transform controls like we were using in some of the other lessons, you can then scale it bigger. And so I'm going to I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. That's fine. And then click on the move tool to make the effect take a take a take effect. And so I'm going to start with the and then I'm going to duplicate this. The magic key on the keyboard to duplicate is option. I'm going to duplicate it by right uh, option click and drag with the move tool. The tell and so then I'm going to use the type tool again and I'm going to type in the tell. Ooh, this is not very readable is it? No, I don't know about this. I have to change the font. Tell. Yeah this is very unreadable. I'm going to finish though and I'm going to type in heart. Now if you saw the other example I actually used the shape of a heart for the heart. Actually, maybe all lowercase letters might work. Heart, A T A R T. Yeah, there you go. I'm getting. Shouldn't have went for up all uppercase. That was my mistake. Let me go back and change it. There we go. And then I'm gonna go back. All lowercase letters. There we go. I was using all uppercase. There we go. All lowercase letters. Very much more readable. And I, I might scatter a little bit. Kind of down like this. There you go. I don't know, something like that. 
maybe change the size of them all. If you select them by holding the shift key down, you, see, you select multiple things, or maybe scale it up really big. There we go. I don't know. That gives me kind of a, a look. So again, we're looking for a title of text to go along with some um, with an image. Make sure it's at 1920 by 1080, and um, save your file and upload it to um, to Angel.